Welcome back to Freight Insight Weekly, brought to you by Freight Collab. Don't forget to subscribe to the Freight Collab channel on YouTube for more deep dives like this one. Definitely worth subscribing. Each week, we uh, break down a stack of sources and try to extract the the key insights. You know, cheat code for staying ahead of the curve. Exactly. Uh -huh. And this week, well, we're diving into something that's got the whole freight world buzzing. Oh yeah, what's that? The potential impact of former President Trump's win. Uh, on global ocean freight. Hmm, interesting. We've got some really fascinating insights from Reuters, Container Magazine, and uh, even Yahoo Finance. Sounds like a good mix. So buckle up. We're talking tariff wars, spiking shipping costs, and even a potential shakeup of, of global supply chains. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's certainly a timely topic, especially with, you know, his proposed tariff hikes and how they could, you know, disrupt the industry. So Trump's back in the Oval Office. Back in the game. Yeah. And uh, he's making waves with these tariff plans. Big waves. What's what's the scoop on those? Well, he's proposing tariffs between 10% and 20% on almost everything uh, coming into the U.S. Most everything. Yeah. And for goods from China, uh, those tariffs could go as high as 60%. 60%. That's, that's a huge escalation compared to, you know, previous trade disputes. I mean, this could really trigger a strong response from China. It might. What's, uh, what's the reasoning behind this? Well, his stated goal, at least, is to revitalize U.S. manufacturing, you know, bring back jobs and make America a, a manufacturing powerhouse again. Right. It's, uh, it's worth noting, though, this isn't entirely new territory for Trump. I mean, protectionist policies, including tariffs, were central to his strategy during his first term. Right, right. The, uh, the trade war with China back in 2018. Yeah. What, uh, what happened back then when the, when the tariffs went up? Well, it was a turbulent time for the shipping industry, to say the least. I mean, when you increase the cost of imported goods, those costs inevitably trickle down to shippers, retailers, and ultimately consumers. Attainer Magazine actually pulled some data from Zanita that illustrates this perfectly. They said that when those 2018 tariffs were implemented, ocean container shipping rates jumped by, like, over 70 percent. Wow! That's a massive increase. It is. It really highlights how sensitive the balance of supply and demand is, yeah. you know? Shipping those goods suddenly became significantly more expensive. Right. Remember all the, the port congestion and the ships stuck waiting to unload? Oh, yeah. That all added to the delays and cost increases. Consumers definitely felt the impact. Absolutely. Things are out of stock everywhere. Yeah. And, and prices just skyrocketed. I mean, are we... Are we looking at a potential repeat of 2018? Potentially, yes. If Trump pushes through with these proposed tariffs, we could be in for a repeat of 2018, perhaps even worse. This is this is where things get interesting, wouldn't you say? For sure. The National Retail Federation, representing giants like Walmart and the footwear distributors and retailers of America, uh, they're both expressing serious concerns. They're essentially warning that these tariffs will burden consumers who will end up paying more for everything. Their concerns are, uh, they're valid. I mean, tariffs act as a hidden tax that gets passed down the chain. Right. And it's not just consumers who are worried. This potential trade war with China is generating uh, anxiety across the entire industry. I mean, shipping companies are bracing themselves for higher costs and, and potential drops in trade volume. Drury, uh, you know, that global maritime consultancy. Yeah. They even stated that, uh, you know, based on his first term, a Trump victory carries more disruptive risk for the container shipping market. Yeah. What's fascinating is how these tariffs could reignite trade tensions, Yeah, particularly with China. Remember the, the trade war in 2018? Oh, I remember it well. We saw shipping costs skyrocket. Yeah, they're not the only ones expressing that sentiment. I mean, many experts believe mm -hmm. this could create a very volatile situation, mm -hmm. especially given the other, you know, challenges that the container market is already facing. Right. Speaking of challenges, there were already issues on the horizon uh, even before the, the election results came in. Oh, absolutely. We had the ongoing Houthi attacks near the Suez Canal, which caused major disruptions to global trade flows. You know, that vital trade route is it's essentially a bottleneck for global commerce. Right. Any threat there sends, you know, shockwaves throughout the entire system. And then, you know, we add a surge in holiday goods and industrial material imports on top of that. I mean, those factors alone were already pushing shipping costs up. For sure. In fact, uh, I read that just recently the cost to ship a 40-foot container from Shanghai to New York hit a, a staggering $10,000. Hmm. And now we're talking about potentially adding even more fuel to that fire with these tariffs. It's definitely a recipe for uncertainty. And it's, it's crucial to remember that the global economy is deeply interconnected. 
Right. Any significant policy shift in the U.S., especially those impacting trade, will inevitably have ripple effects worldwide. You know, we could see shifts in global trade flows, companies scrambling to adjust their supply chains. Mm. It's uh, it's like shaking up a snow globe. Things are going to settle in a new pattern. Right. But we don't know exactly what that pattern will look like yet. That's that's a great analogy. And and, and it leads us to another point, the, the Trump factor. He's he's not exactly known for subtlety when it comes to trade policy, is he? Let's just say he's uh, he's not afraid to disrupt the status quo. And if his past actions are any indication, we can expect some uh, some bold, potentially disruptive moves in international trade. Yahoo Finance had an article about this uh, highlighting how Drury, those maritime experts we mentioned earlier, yeah. they're saying that a Trump win carries more uh, disruptive risk for the container market. Interesting. Drury pointed out that Trump's first round of tariffs actually accelerated a trend we'd already been seeing, mm -hmm. supply chain diversification. Oh, right. Companies started looking beyond China to source their goods, and that led to a, a significant shift in market share. It did. So instead of having everything flow through China, we might see a more uh, spread out network of manufacturing hubs. It's possible. What would that, what would that mean for the shipping industry? It could be a, uh, a game changer. Imagine a world where instead of giant container ships sailing directly from China to the U.S., we have smaller vessels making multiple stops across Southeast Asia, India, or even Mexico. Wow. That's a that's a very different logistical landscape. And, and potentially a lot more complicated, right? Definitely. More routes, more handoffs, more potential for delays and disruptions. Right. But it could also create uh, new opportunities for shipping companies that can, you know, adapt to this new reality. This all makes me think about something else that Container Magazine mentioned, that, that Trump's election was seen as a uh, step in the wrong direction for international trade by some folks. I see. That's, a, that's a perspective we hear a lot, especially from those who uh, favor free trade policies. Mm. The argument is that uh, tariffs create barriers to trade, stifle economic growth, and ultimately hurt consumers. Right. It sounds like there's there's no easy answer here. I mean, tariffs could lead to higher costs and disruptions in the in the short term, but you know they might also encourage diversification and and ultimately benefit U.S. manufacturing in the long run. It's a uh, it's a complex equation with a lot of moving parts, and it's going to be fascinating to see how this all unfolds in the coming months and years. All right, so let's try to bring this all together. <laughs> We've got a new Trump administration ambitious tariff plans, concerns about trade wars and rising shipping costs, and uh, and the potential for some pretty major shifts in global supply chains. A lot going on. What, what does it all mean for our listeners? Well, uh, here's the takeaway. The freight landscape is about to get a whole lot more turbulent. Okay. Businesses need to be prepared for volatility, oh. for potential price increases, and uh, for the possibility of having to adjust their sourcing and logistics strategies. It's it's like we're entering a new era of uncertainty in global trade. That's uh, that's one way to put it. But remember, uncertainty can also breed opportunity. You're right. Amidst all this uh, all this chaos, there's also the potential for innovation and new ways of doing business. Absolutely, companies that are. Uh, Agile, adaptable, and willing to embrace change will be the ones that thrive in this new environment. This has been a, uh, a mind-blowing deep dive, so yeah. so much to think about. Before we go any deeper, I want to remind you to subscribe to the Freight Collab channel on YouTube so you can stay up to date on all things Freight. Also, uh, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. We'll be back in a flash to unpack even more this uh, this fascinating topic. That's true. Uncertainty can definitely breed opportunity. Uh, let's shift gears a bit and talk about some of the potential opportunities that could emerge from these uh, shifts in global trade. Okay, yeah, let's explore that. We talked about supply chain diversification, but uh, what does that really look like in practice if companies are moving away from China? You know, where are they going? Who are the, the winners in this new landscape? Well, Southeast Asia is already emerging as a, as a major player. Countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand... They've seen a surge in investment in recent years. Interesting. They offer attractive labor costs, uh, increasingly sophisticated manufacturing capabilities, and and a key advantage: they're not China. So, so for companies looking to diversify away from China, these countries offer 
uh, a compelling alternative. What about uh, closer to home? Any chance of uh, uh, U.S. manufacturing comeback? There's definitely potential there. Bringing manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. was one of Trump's central campaign promises, after all. Right. While tariffs are a controversial method, they could incentivize companies to reconsider uh, domestic production. So could we see a resurgence of uh, Made in America mm. products? That would be a, a significant shift. It would be a uh, a major development, but it's unlikely to happen overnight. You know, U.S. manufacturing faces several challenges, including higher labor costs and a shortage of skilled workers. And let's not forget the infrastructure hurdle. We'd need to significantly upgrade our ports, roads, and rail systems to accommodate a uh, surge in domestic production. Precisely. It's a multifaceted equation. Even if we don't witness a full-blown manufacturing renaissance in the U.S., it seems safe to say that the the global supply chain map is poised for a major transformation in the coming years. Yeah. It's, it's like we're standing on the precipice of uh, a tectonic shift in how goods are are produced and transported worldwide. And and just like with tectonic plates, we can anticipate some some friction, some upheaval along the way. Yeah. But ultimately, it, it could lead to a more balanced and resilient global trade system. OK, so we've delved into the potential ripple effects of Trump's trade policies on on everything from shipping costs to to global supply chains. Let's let's zoom out for a moment and consider the bigger picture. What are the, the broader implications for the global economy? Well, one thing is certain. We are entering a period of heightened uncertainty. Yeah. Businesses will need to be more uh, agile, more adaptable than, than ever before. Mm. They'll need to carefully analyze their supply chains, diversify their sourcing strategies, and, uh, and prepare for price fluctuations and potential disruptions. It sounds like those who can anticipate and adapt to these changes will have a, a distinct advantage in this evolving landscape. Absolutely. Complacency is not an option in this environment. Yep. Companies need to be proactive, stay informed about global trends and be uh, be prepared to make strategic adjustments. And what about the the impact on consumers? How might these changes affect our our daily lives? Well, we've already discussed the potential for higher prices. If tariffs lead to increased costs for imported goods, those costs will likely be passed on to consumers. So, are we looking at at price hikes on everything, from from electronics to clothing to to groceries? It's certainly a possibility. However. There's also the potential for uh, increased product diversity. As supply chains become more diversified, consumers may have access to uh, a wider range of goods from various parts of the world. So there could be some some upside for consumers amid all this uncertainty. Exactly. There, there could be some silver linings. Ultimately, the impact on consumers will depend on several factors, including how businesses respond to these uh, evolving dynamics. This has been an, an incredibly insightful deep dive with so much to consider and, and digest. It certainly is a lot to unpack, but that's what we aim to do here at Freight Insight Weekly. We, uh, we break down complex topics and equip you with the knowledge you need to stay ahead of the curve. Before we wrap up part two, I want to encourage everyone listening to subscribe to the Freight Collab channel on YouTube for uh, more in-depth analysis and insights. Also, leave a comment and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear your, uh, your perspective. We'll be back shortly with part three to further explore this complex and uh, fascinating topic. We're back for the final part of our deep dive. Uh, you know, looking at the potential impact of a Trump presidency on global freight. It's been a fascinating discussion so far. It has. We've uh, we've covered a lot of ground. Tariff plans, potential trade wars, rising shipping costs, the shift in global supply chains. A lot to digest. We also talked about how these changes could lead to a uh, more diversified global supply chain. Let's dig a little deeper into what that actually looks like you know, on the ground. Sure. So instead of having uh, most manufacturing concentrated in China, companies might start sourcing goods from other countries. We've already talked about Southeast Asia, right? Yep. With countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, they're attracting significant investment. What's interesting is that this could reshape global shipping routes and create uh, new logistics hubs. Yeah. Imagine companies shifting production from China to Vietnam for uh, apparel, for instance, or to Mexico for electronics. OK, so for companies looking to uh, reduce their dependence on China, these countries present uh, an attractive alternative. 
But what about uh, closer to home? Could U.S. manufacturing actually make a comeback? There's definitely potential there. One of Trump's uh, key campaign promises was bringing manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. Yeah. And while tariffs are uh, controversial, they could incentivize companies to reconsider producing goods domestically. So we could see a resurgence of... Uh made in america products potentially it would be a significant shift but realistically it's not going to happen overnight u.s manufacturing faces some major obstacles higher labor costs a shortage of skilled workers and we can't forget about uh the infrastructure challenges mm -hmm. we'd need a major overhaul of our ports roads and rail systems to handle a uh, a surge in domestic production Exactly. It's uh, it's a complex situation. Even if we don't see a full blown manufacturing renaissance in the U.S., it seems safe to say that the the global supply chain map will look very different in the coming years. Right. And uh, if we connect this to the bigger picture, Trump's policies could accelerate a trend we've already been seeing supply chain diversification. It's like we're on the verge of a, uh, a seismic shift in how goods are produced and transported around the world. And just like with earthquakes, there's going to be some uh, shaking and disruption along the way. But ultimately, it could result in a more stable and resilient global trade system. OK, so we've discussed the potential ripple effects of Trump's trade policies on on everything from shipping costs to global supply chains. Mm. Let's zoom out for a moment and consider the, the bigger picture. Yeah. What are the broader implications for the global economy? Well, one thing's for sure. We're in for a period of increased uncertainty. Businesses will have to be more uh flexible and adaptable than ever. They'll need to carefully assess their supply chains, diversify their sourcing, and be prepared for price fluctuations and uh, potential disruptions. It sounds like those who can anticipate and adapt to these changes will have a real advantage. Absolutely. Complacency is, uh, is not an option. Companies need to be proactive, stay informed, and be willing to adjust as needed. And what about consumers? How might these changes affect our everyday lives? Well, we've talked about the potential for higher prices. If tariffs increase costs for imported goods, those costs are likely to be passed on to consumers. So are we looking at price hikes on everything from <laughs> electronics and clothes to, to groceries? It's definitely a possibility, but there's also a potential upside. Greater product diversity. As supply chains become more diverse, consumers might have access to a uh, wider range of goods from different parts of the world. So it's not all bad news for shoppers. Exactly. There could be some uh, positive outcomes amidst the uncertainty. Ultimately, the effect on consumers will hinge on many factors, including how businesses respond to these changing dynamics. Drury predicts that Trump's policies could increase freight rates by uh, 10 to 15 percent in the next year based on historical trends and current market conditions. Wow. This has been an incredibly insightful deep dive. So much to uh, consider. So much to think about. It really is a lot to process. But that's what we do here at Freight Insight Weekly. We uh, break down complex topics and give you the knowledge you need to stay ahead of the curve. Before we wrap up, I want to remind everyone to subscribe to the Freight Collab channel on YouTube for more deep dives like this. We'll be exploring all kinds of fascinating topics uh, related to freight and logistics. And don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what you think. We love hearing from our listeners. What are your predictions for the, uh, for the future of freight in this new era? Is the road ahead bumpy or smooth? Share your thoughts, and let's uh, keep the conversation going. Until next time, keep on shipping, keep on learning, and keep those comments coming.